Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation, Grounded Theory Research. Today, myself, Emma Sanders, Olivia Vukalovic, and Cynthia Tai are focusing on the Grounded Theory Research Model. Here we have attached a table of contents that will further identify what we plan to discuss within this presentation. In this presentation, you will find the definition of grounded theory, the history behind the grounded theory method, when to use the grounded theory method, three different types, key characteristics, ethical issues, steps in conducting grounded theory research, a sample study, evaluating grounded theory research, a checklist of quality criteria. You will also find indicators of higher quality grounded theory studies, quality evaluation of our sample study, sampling techniques, the contrast between grounded theorists and other theorists, indicators of quality criteria, questions, our handout, and references. Grounded theory means a systematic qualitative procedure used to generate a theory that explains at a broad conceptual level a process, an action, or an interaction about a substantive topic. It is a process theory, which means it explains an educational process of events, activities, actions, and interactions that occur over time. Since it offers a step-by-step -step systematic procedure for analyzing data, which is very helpful for beginning qualitative researchers, the theory is grounded in the data, so it can provide a better explanation than a theory taken from the book or borrowed from elsewhere, because it fits the situation, actually works in practice, sensitive to individuals in a setting and may represent all of the complexities actually found in the process. So it is rigorous and self-corrective, especially when you are working with children with special needs. Existing theories are probably not helpful because we cannot make sure they really match the exact situation, but grounded theories will give us ideas to create authentic and reliable strategies. The Grounded Research Design was funded by Barney G. Glasser and Ansley L. Strauss, who are sociologists in the late 1960s, since both of them have strong interest in qualitative research. It was involved out of their work at the University of California, San Francisco Medical Center with patients who were terminally ill. When they were studying their patients, they recorded and publicized their methods of research. So, a lot of people became interested in learning more about their research methodology. After that, Glasser and Strauss wrote a pioneering book with details on their grounded theory procedures. It is called The Discovery of Grounded Theory, which is popular until today. Also, it is an amazing procedural guide for dissertations and research reports. In the book, Glasser and Strauss emphasize a theory discovered during data collection will fit the situation being researched and will work when put into use, which means data from the research is more reliable than theories from textbooks, since the current theory in sociology overstays verifying and examining theories rather than figuring out the variables and hypotheses from the actual field data from participants. So, grounded theory design has an amazing history and the definition explains how useful it is. But when do we use grounded theory? We use it when we need to explain a broad theory or a process, which means existing theories cannot address their problem or the participants in the study. There are three types of grounded theory design, which are the systematic design, the emerging design, and the constructive design. The systematic design is popular in educational research, and I mentioned it in my previous slides, that the grounded theory design is a systematic and qualitative procedure. And in the grounded theory, the systematic design emphasizes the use of data analysis. They should be with steps of open, active, and selective coding. The open coding has roles of provider, enabler, advocate, mentor, encourager, and collaborator. 
It provides more details about each category and helps figure out extreme examples. Active coding means the series select one open coding category and makes it at the center of the process and then connects with other categories. Selective coding formulates a theory based on the interrelationship of the categories, and researchers usually collect data through interviews or observations. The emerging design is a reaction to systematic design in many ways. It allows the theory to emerge from the data rather than forcing the data into preconceived categories. Jupiter is the fourth brightest object in the sky, is a famous example of the emerging design by Galileo with his telescope and measurement in 1609. The last one, the constructive design, was created by Sharmas as a philosophical position because she felt Glasser and Strauss theories were too systematic and would lose the flexibility and the meaning to participants. So the constructive design focuses on the intention of the research to participants. It focuses on the views, values, beliefs, feelings, assumptions, and ideologies of individuals rather than in gathering and describing facts. However, the confusion are suggestive, incomplete, or inconclusive. And there are six key characteristics of a grounded theory design, which are process approach, theoretical sampling, constant comparative data analysis, a core category, theory generation, and mammals. A process approach, the theorists develop an understanding of a process that is relevant to a substantive issue. So the process is a squeegee of actions and interaction among people and events relating to the topic. And theorists can isolate and identify actions and interactions among participants. For theoretical sampling, it means the researcher chooses forms of data collection that will yield text and images useful in generating a theory. So the sampling is intentional and focuses on the generation of a theory. And the theoretical sampling does not only focus on the data, but also focuses on its theoretical value. For constant comparative data analysis, it is an inductive data analysis procedure in grounded theory research of generating and connecting categories by comparing incidents in the data to other incidents, incidents to categories, and categories to other categories, which is from specific to broad. For the core category, it is used for writing the theory, and it is selected after identifying several categories. It has to be related to all categories and appear frequently in data, and its name should be sufficiently abstract. For theory generation, the theories identify a core category and its process category. They can generate a middle-range theory, which is based on the data. Since it's too close to the data, it doesn't have broad acceptability. The last characteristic, memo writing, is a tool for providing an ongoing dialogue among researchers about their emerging theory. Memo means notes that researchers write throughout the research process to elaborate on ideas about the data and coded categories. So it is full of researchers' ideas, thoughts, and understanding. There are some potential ethical issues of grounded theory design. Since it is an approach to the analysis of data, there are some potential ethical issues of privacy, consent, confidentiality, deceit, deception, and harm. Even though there is a general purpose statement for any given study, people still have no idea of the direction or the nature of the study. The interviews in grounded theory are with issues of power and authority and giving appropriate voice to participants about the process of research. While reflecting on the systematic design of grounded theory research, it can consist of eight identifiable steps which Creswell and Getterman identify as number one, deciding if a grounded theory design can best address your research problem. 
A grounded theory design is most appropriate when you are looking to develop or modify a theory, explain a process, and develop a general abstraction of the interaction and action of people. Grounded theory focuses more on qualitative research, while most suitable for sensitive topics or situations in which individuals' privacy needs to be protected. These are important things to consider when choosing if this specific research method is best for your particular topic of interest. Number two, identify a process to study. Because the intent of grounded theory research is to explain a process, you need to ensure you are identifying a tentative process to examine early on in your grounded theory study and research. This process should naturally follow from the research problem and questions that you are looking to answer. Number three, seek approval and access. As with all research studies, you need to obtain approval from the Institutional Review Board while also ensuring you are gaining access to individuals who can provide insight into the process that you plan to study. Like many other studies, this step also includes gaining access and approval towards collecting data, appraising individuals for the specific study, and guaranteeing protection of the site and participants while conducting your research and inquiry. Continuing with the eight steps identified by Creswell and Getterman that can enable us to complete the successful grounded theory research. Number five, code the data. Coding the data occurs during data collection so that you can successfully determine what data to collect next. Number six, use selective coding and develop the theory. This final process of coding involves actually developing your theory. This can include interrelating categories within the coding paradigm. You can present this theory as a series of propositions or sub-propositions. This stage can also involve writing a story or narrative that can best describe the interrelationship among categories. Number seven, validate your theory. In this step, it is important to determine if your theory makes sense to participants and is it an accurate rendering of events and their sequence in the process. In Creswell and Getterman's text, they suggest that in grounded theory research, validation is an active part of the process of research. Number eight, write a grounded theory research report. The structure of your report will vary from a flexible structure in the emerging and constructivist design to a more qualitatively oriented structure in the systematic design. Compared with other qualitative designs, the structure of a grounded theory study is scientific and includes a problem, method, method, discussion, and a result. The objective is often third-person oriented and the end with a theory that is generated by the research reporting his or her abstraction of the process under examination. Here we have provided a sample study that utilizes a grounded theory method to further complete a qualitative research study. The title of the study is A Grounded Theory Exploration of the First Visit to a Cancer Clinic, Strategies for Achieving Acceptance. The purpose of completing the study and research was to investigate and identify various cancer patients' first visit and experiences at the cancer clinic and how these patients can reach acceptance of the impact cancer has on their lives. Five different categories were identified throughout the study as being important for reaching acceptance. These categories can include action, knowledge, respect, continuity, and confidence. In this slide, we will be evaluating grounded theory research and questions that support a critical evaluation of high quality grounded theory research studies. These questions include, what are the benefits of the individuals gained from the research? What is the importance of the concepts discussed in the research? And finally, what is the importance of the discussions taking place within the research? such as the logic, depth, variation, creative and innovative mannerisms, and new findings. All of these questions support the establishment of evaluating the quality of criteria in a grounded theory study. In this slide, we will be taking a look at a checklist of quality criteria in grounded theory studies pulled from Table 13.1 of the textbook. The following checklist includes points such as the process or action of the study is identified by the theorist, a theory is conducted by the researcher, strong correlation between the data, the categories, and the theory, memoing is exemplified by the researcher, a visual model of the theory is presented, and finally, one of the types of the grounded theory designs is implemented within the study. 
In this slide, we will discuss the indicators of a higher quality grounded theory study, also pulled from Table 13.1 of the textbook. Creswell 2019 elaborates on the checklist points from the prior slide to further discuss these following indicators. Purpose statement and visual model illustrates the process or action. A theoretical model through a discussion, a visual, or a set of hypotheses is included in the conclusion of the advancement of a theoretical model. And a strong correlation is evident between the data, the categories or topics, and the theory through the use of statements. Creswell 2019 also elaborates on the process of memoing is discussed throughout the method component of the project, including both the process of memoing and the ways in which the memoing was used. An explanation of the process or action being studied is evident through a visual model of the theory, as well as the choice between systematic, emerging, or constructivist approaches discussed, including citations in the approach as indicators of high quality criteria. In this next slide, we will be critically evaluating a grounded theory exploration of the first visit to a cancer clinic, Strategies for Acceptance, by Jacobison, Horvath, and Alberg, 2005. Question number one in this evaluation asks, what are the benefits of the individuals gained from the research? This article shows us that the data analysis gave rise to a process leading to a core category which showed how patients can reach acceptance of the impact cancer has on their lives. Question number two asks, what is the importance of the concepts discussed in the research? And this article shows us that five different categories were identified as being important for reaching acceptance, namely action, knowledge, respect, continuity, and confidence, meaning that if all these conditions are met, patients feel confident. Question number three asks, what is the importance of the discussions taking place within the research, such as the logic, death, variation, creative and innovative mannerisms, and new findings? And this article shows us that all of the data collected was structured through interviews, uh, what was your experience of your first visit provided opportunities for free and open expression from the patients interviewed? Previous data from prior interviews was highlighted to confirm certain aspects and findings of the interviews. And following the interviews of each patient, the data analysis was collected through open, axial, and selective coding. Uh, an open coding included repeated readings of the interviews and in-depth line-by-line analysis of the data as well. When evaluating the sampling techniques used by grounded theorists, we have discovered that grounded theorists use a variety of qualitative information to establish the, these research studies. This includes collecting observations, conversations, interviews, public records, respondents' diaries and journals, and the researchers' own personal reflections. Interviewing is another popular way theorists conduct their studies. This supports the author in best capturing the best experience of participants in their own words. This approach is also consistent with the constructivist position. When comparing the contrast between grounded theorists and other theorists, we have discovered that in regard to purposeful sampling of individuals to interview or observe, grounded theorists offer a contrasting perspective, varying from the usual qualitative approaches when collecting data in research studies. We have also discovered that theoretical sampling exhibited by grounded theorists specifically pulls information and visuals to support the creation of a theory. Creswell 2019 states that this means that the sampling is intentional and focused on the generation of a theory. There are many indicators of high quality criteria in a grounded theory exploration of the first visit to a cancer clinic, Strategies for Achieving Acceptance by Jacobison, Horvath, and Elberg, 2005. Both Table 1 and Figure 1 in this article, as well as the purpose statement, illustrates the process or action aimed in this study. There is a strong correlation between the data collected for the study, the topics of the study, action, knowledge, respect, continuity, and confidence, and the statements made throughout the paper regarding the theory. 
An explanation of the process or action being studied is evident through a visual model of the theory. A constructivist approach, approach is discussed by Jacobson, Horvath, and Alberg 2005 in this study as well. Here we have attached 10 different questions we have developed through conducting our research. Number one, fill in the blanks. Grounded theory means a blank, blank procedure used to generate a theory about a substantive topic. Number two, what trait does grounded theory research have? Number three, who are the founders of the grounded theory research? Number four, when do we need to use grounded theory research? And number five, there are three types of grounded theory research. Can you describe one of them? Continuing with our questions, number six, there are six key characteristics of grounded theory research. Can you describe two of them? Number seven, what potential ethical issue does grounded theory design have? Number eight, what is an example of a high quality indicator in grounded theory research design? Number nine, when evaluating quality criteria, there should be a strong correlation between the blank, the blank, and the blank. Can you fill in the blanks? Number 10, when should a theoretical model visual be included in a grounded theory design research study? Here we have attached the link to our handout as well as an example photo. Feel free to click on the link and take a better look at the handout that can briefly summarize the key concepts discussed within our presentation. Thanks so much for taking the time to view our presentation. We hope you are able to gain a deeper understanding of the grounded theory research model, as well as how you can successfully identify and complete grounded theory research of your own. If you have any further questions, feel free to email myself, Olivia, or Cynthia through our Fanshawe Online emails posted on the slide.